Hi everybody, in this video, uh, Joel and I are going to show you how to take your project data and turn it into those sustainability readiness reports that we showed you yesterday. Now, if you're a Revit user, this is the surprise that we have for you. We have a Revit plugin uh, that will take your uh, Revit model and turn it into a digital twin in the cloud so that we can then run the algorithms to do the scoring and produce the reports for you. Um, so. We hope you'll take advantage of this. Again, there's no cost for this. Um, we're just doing this so that uh, people can understand what is in their models, uh, bridge that trust gap with the data that's in the model so we can give an idea of the data quality as you go into the various sustainability scoring processes uh, to evaluate your projects. So with any, without any uh, further delay, I'm gonna bring Joel in and we're gonna show you uh, how to do this process so you can get your scoring reports. Hi everyone, well, we told you we were gonna show you how you can upload your own projects and get some sustainability reports to see where you are uh, on the baseline for making some digital twins of your projects. And Joel's gonna show us how to do that. So Joel, uh, why don't you take it away and explain how everybody can, can go through this process. Sure thing, okay. So the first thing folks will want to do is visit cloud.vimaec.com. You can see it in the, um, the note there in the top right of the screen. And um, here I am registering a new account. So I'm gonna put in my email address and then I'll get a verification code sent to my email address, which just takes a couple seconds. Um, let me check my email. Wait, wait, there it is. And get my code. Um, so and the reason people need to do this is that this account is where the reports are gonna get published and also where their data is gonna be stored for the, for the project upload, right? That's right, totally, yeah. All right, so I verified my account and the next step for me uh, in order to make a Vim file is to install Vim for Windows. And then I can do all these other things like convert and inspect and make my report. Um, I've just downloaded the Vim file installer. Um, Got to make sure I read through the EULA and accept it to continue. Very important. We all do that, right, Marty? All the time. Um, I'm going to elect not to launch Vim right away and just click finish and jump right into Revit. I just, I don't want to waste any time. So I'm going to hop right into Revit, open up uh, my favorite Revit project and choose to make a Vim. Now I noticed that I have to sign in. So let me do that right away. It kicks me over to a browser and I just log myself in and that allows me to generate that Vim file directly from Revit. So Joel, just a second. So when you said I'm going to make a Vim file, what did you have to do after installing the plugin? Just go to the Vim tab in Revit? Yeah, all I had to do was uh, go to the Vim tab in Revit and then pick the 3D view that I want to generate my Vim file from. And we normally pick a, um, a new 3D view that has whatever it is that we want to share. Whatever is going to be in the 3D view ends up yeah. in whatever you're uploading to, right. to do the scoring. Okay. Yep. Uh, so here I am, I'll just log in here. Um, and that recognizes that I'm doing it from Revit and I've got some options. So where I can save my file, what 3d view to pick and, um, and the name of the file. And so I'm just going to confirm that I'm going to save it here. I think to the desktop. Yeah, that's going to be the best place. So let me do that. Click start. And depending on the project size, um, and thanks to Revit's um, architecture, the process could take a few seconds, it could take a few minutes. In this case for us, it took four minutes and 13 seconds, but through the power of movie magic, we sped it up for everyone on screen. Um, I am gonna take a quick little check on the file locally because we do have a desktop app, and I'm just making sure that all the bits and pieces are in there from my 3D view that I did indeed want to include, especially this equipment up on the roof of the building. That was and some BIM coordinators me. might recognize this model since it's the publicly available sample model for the BIM health check from Autodesk. So totally. we're just running that through here so you can see how yeah. that scores. Totally, and and I just clicked on the desktop app, the um, a little button that let me get right to the uh, VIM cloud. 
so that I could get my Vim file uploaded and generated into a report. And so it just got me back over there. But now um, my next step is to upload my Vim file. So I'm gonna click an upload button. And I went over to my project, chose upload. I'm gonna go to the desktop, pick that Vim file. And the dot .vim. The dot .vim yep. and upload it. And uh, upload times vary depending on your internet speed. Um, my internet speed is pretty good. So it uploaded quite quickly. And now that I've got it uploaded, uh, if I actually choose to select that file, there's a generate report button that shows up in the top. And I, I click OK on that pop up. And I'll get an email, and I just got it, um, saying that my report's ready. So now I can click on view my awesome. report or click on the BI reports tab and be able to see my report in all its glory. <laughs> and here we go. So let's see what my score was. Hey, looks like I'm doing pretty good. Um, Marty, talk so to So just to be scores. clear, these scores are for the readiness of the model for lead energy modeling and carbon. And of course, if you're less than 100%, then one of the discipline categories is probably missing something. So we give you some information about that in the details. Yeah. And so like if I go to energy modeling, for example, uh, if I click on that, you can see, you know, mechanical, it actually doesn't have some equipment assigned to the mechanical systems that it should be. And so we lose a bit on that. Um, and we don't consider things like structure and FF and E in not for that case, yeah. Modeling. So, yeah. Uh, so at the end of this in. video, we have a, a short detail of the scoring methodology for those of you who are BIM coordinators and Revit experts and are curious about that. Just uh, it's optional for <laughs> it's after the bumper. So yeah. Um, and in case anyone's interested. So so this is really neat, and and we uh, encourage people to share the reports. So you can do that by clicking on a. Um, a share report button on the top right, and it gives you a URL that you could share with anybody. In fact, you could email it, you could post it on LinkedIn if you really wanted to, or social media, um, and let other people know what kind of score you're getting on your projects. I should also note, as an added service to the community, um, the files, just the Vim files when they get uploaded to the cloud, they are themselves um, WebGL um, viewable. So you can just click on it and take a look at your Vim file directly in the cloud. And again, click on the, uh, the share link button in the top right to be able to um, share those Vims with anybody through a public URL. And it's totally up to you if you want to do that, but we think it's pretty neat. You know, like we said before in yesterday's video, we're doing these reports as basically a public service to the industry uh, to make you aware of the data quality uh, and the process by which you can get into digital twins for these projects. So uh, hopefully you'll take advantage of this. You'll you'll take a look at one of your projects using this process, and we encourage you to share it with uh, anybody you think might be interested in it. Now, for those of you with significant uh, background in Revit, I'm going to show you the scoring methodology so you understand how the data in the project was uh, uh, weighted to produce the readiness report. This is completely optional, and uh, it is just here for those of you who want to understand the methodology. Okay, what you see in front of you is the methodology for how we are scoring the various uh, readiness use cases. Uh, on the left, you can see the discipline that appears in the reports. And in Revit, what system uh, that is in the model. And for those that <clears throat> have uniformat codes, the top level uniformat code for that system. And then in the use cases here on the these columns, we say which of these apply 
to the various reports. Then when you go over to these columns, you will see for the category how much total weight that discipline has in the scoring methodology and within that discipline how much each uh, system has. Some of these systems map directly to Revit categories. Some of them re uh, map to multiple Revit categories. And what we're looking for is first the presence of objects in that uh, Revit category and then the presence of generally speaking non-default type properties. Um, and there are special cases where we will look at instance properties like rooms, but in most cases we're looking at the type properties and the presence of data in the type properties and whether those objects are mapped into a system. So you'll see this various feedback on your scoring reports when we find gaps in the data. Uh, in this version of the plugin, site is not implemented, so those 5% uh, site uh, scores are added into the architecture discipline. Uh, in the future versions, uh, we might do more analysis of, of site and site work. Uh, but for now, we just have added those into the architecture category for this version 1.0 of the scoring methodology. So thanks for your participation. Um, if you have feedback, let us know and look forward to seeing you in future versions of the challenge.